In the previous video I assembled and set up my 3D printed CNC machine. I designed the machine to include several features which addressed issues I had with earlier versions or similar hobbyist CNC machines that I had used. I think the machine is pretty good for a hobbyist machine but none would be complete without a dust shoe. One of the first things you should do with your CNC machine is level the wasteboard. But that is a very messy process so I'm going to make a dust shoe to dramatically minimise the particles which can be emitted while CNCing. It's not bad at all really. I think I put the radius on this a lot larger than the other three. That's a bit stupid. I began by cutting one out with the machine itself using some scrap ply. You can see how simple it could be to make. I'm also using scrap bits of flexible PVC curtain which I'm stapling onto the ply frame after which I snip using a garden secateurs to create the flap so air can pass through to help with extraction. Eventually however I realised the dust shoe was a little too wide for the wasteboard and would push against the Y axis C beams on either side of the machine. Also the bit I wanted to use to surface the wasteboard couldn't reach the furthest ends. It then occurred to me having my wasteboard that low was an odd design feature. It meant I was restricting the maximum width along the x-axis between the c-beam and not the plates. There's not much I can do about this now but maybe I can reconsider this for future designs. I then thought to myself if I 3D printed all the plates so far why don't I also 3D print the dust shoe as well. I took some measurements off the 3D model for the machine which I had designed. These included the offset of the centre of the extraction hose to the centre of the spindle and the spindle to the z-axis c-beam. And once I had those measurements it was pretty easy to draw something new. This is what I drew. It would be a stationary shoe which the spindle passes through. As I'll be mainly machining 2D profiles I can adjust the bottom of the shoe to run along or just above the material, keeping the distance to a minimum and ensuring the maximum amount of dust is extracted. Okay, I've made a 3D printed dust shoe that fits on my CNC machine like this. It's a fixed position one, so the spindle actually moves through the opening and this uh, hose here eventually clips into place here when the bit is a little further down. I printed two versions, the first having a few things I overlooked. I tried to bevel the top spindle opening to make it more aerodynamic but somehow made it narrower than the spindle diameter itself which was a silly mistake. And secondly the mount for the arms being a little too short. The print time was about 10 hours in total. I'm preparing the machine to surface the wasteboard, probing the bit, homing the machine and moving to the origin position. While doing this I noticed something I had to address with my dust shoe assembly. So the uh, machine screw is actually in the channel along here. Essentially this bit here can't move so that isn't going to be a problem. I just need to make sure that when I set my shape to area clear that I don't exceed the outside of the bit. So I take the bit into account when I'm creating that rectangle. I spoke too soon and my first attempt to level a wasteboard resulted in a crash. Okay that just hit straight into the side of the machine. I overshot my wasteboard dimensions and bumped the dust shoe into the C-beam on the left hand side of the machine. I think after I homed the machine and set the new coordinates I didn't compensate for the origin being further in. I also didn't realise that the machine screw on the dust shoe had bottomed out on the channel of the C-beam so I couldn't move further to the edge. What I'm going to do is take the bottom machine screws out and replace them with smaller ones which uh, will hold this uh, in line with the uh, slots but I'll only tighten the top. The bottom machine screw will act like a stud and help keep the shoe square and will also mean that I only have to tighten two machine screws instead of four. 
I decided to use my brain and after homing I moved the gantry to the opposite corner manually, reading the measurements off the software I was using. Okay, I've moved my spindle across to the other corner of the machine and I've taken account the position uh, writing that down and then what I've done is offset another rectangle the diameter of the bit that I'm using which is about 25 mil and that's centered so I'm going to create two uh, g-code files now I'm going to have one that goes along this perimeter and then I'm going to do area clear within it With all the CNC machines I've made, I've always had this clicking noise while moving along the x-axis and I can't quite tell where that noise is coming from. I did a perimeter area clear but ran into another problem. Some of these problems are my own mistakes or oversights while others seem accidental. This one was accidental, I think. I'm sure I tightened the motor couplers for the x-axis. Anyway, this had become loose and meant the lead screw was slipping. I fixed this simply by tightening the grub screws. Okay, the coupler on this side here has come loose. I'm gonna have to tighten that up. It was slipping for some reason. The next thing that went wrong was the bit I'd used to surface began to scorch the wasteboard. It was sold as a surfacing bit, but I could never get the feeds and speeds right for the smaller free tooth ones. I tried changing the cutting method from conventional to climb. This is simply the blade traveling into the cut or away from it, but that didn't help. So I decided to use another bit. I'm now doing a raster surfacing attempt. Instead of spiraling, this method of cutting goes from one side to the other. I decided to go along my X axis and to avoid doing front to back, as that would have hidden the effects of the spindle nod, which my pivot plates would have dramatically reduced. I also checked the temperature of the spindle using my laser temperature measurer. What I noticed is under strain, using the free tooth surfacing bit for example, heat would build up in the tool and the spindle. As long as you don't overstrain the tool and try not to cut too much off in one go, the spindle shouldn't heat up too much. I got readings of a maximum of 30 Celsius, That's the bit that I used in the end. So that took me a couple goes to do. The cutting job uh, by itself was about 40 minutes. I was running the tool at 1200 millimeters a minute. And there is a bit of dust around, especially when the shoe got to the edge. But that's a lot less than when I've had to do this or when I have done this without a dust shoe on the previous machines. The so. other thing that happened to go wrong was managing to plunge straight into the corner of the wasteboard, twice. I was lucky I didn't reach the aluminium profile the second time. The first time was because I didn't probe the bit and set the depth correctly when changing to the new tool, but the second time was a little bit more confusing. It seems that I have to home the machine, import the DXF file and then probe. I didn't do it in that order and something went wrong. The last thing I did was check how square the freshly surfaced wasteboard was to the spindle bit and to make the final adjustments. I found the longest parallel bit I had and used an engineer square to hold the bevel box to the bit. I slackened the machine screws on the pivot plate and made my final adjustments. While this isn't the most rigid CNC machine that you can build, for the cost and the method it's easy to do and the features I've designed into the machine help reduce the errors that are often present with hobbyist machines. I'm now going to use the CNC machine to cut out some test parts for another design I've been working on which will use narrower 12mm linear guides and I will be showing that in the next video. So thanks again for watching and to all my patrons for their support. Mm -hmm.